Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about autism. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about why we are seeing such an increase in the number of people who are being diagnosed with autism. Without a doubt, here in the U.S., we have seen a rise in the number of people being diagnosed with autism in the past few decades. In fact, the rate has risen so dramatically that I've even seen those with a more cure-based ideology refer to this increase as an autism epidemic. So, why has the rate gone up so much? There are some really practical reasons as to why that's the case. For starters, while autism was first labeled in the early 1940s, it wasn't in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual until 1980. That's important because that manual is the book that clinicians and diagnostic professionals use to identify autism. That means the numbers have gone up remarkably since the 80s because prior to that time, it simply wasn't in the book. Another big reason is that in that 40-year gap between when autism was labeled back in the 40s until the 1980s, the age range for identifying autistic people was widened. The only identified type of autism during this 40-year period that was really discussed among clinicians was called infantile autism. Infantile autism was classified as severe developmental disorder hallmarked by social and communication disturbances before the age of 30 months. And that's about two and a half years old. Now, obviously, if you are autistic, you've been autistic since birth. But sometimes it can be hard to identify autism at such a young age. In fact, the average age of diagnosis here in the U.S. is four years old, which coincides with when many kids start public school that might make social and communication issues much more apparent. Another major reason autism rates have increased is that in 2006, the American Academy of Pediatrics began recommending routine autism screening for all children between the ages of 18 and 24 months. While this is still a little early to be able to catch everyone with autism, and certainly not everyone has adequate access to this type of healthcare, expanded testing still leads to more identified autistics. And since more testing leads to more identified autistics, it should come as no surprise that the test itself is another major reason that diagnosed autistic rates are increasing. The clinical test used to make a determination regarding autism is called the Autism Diagnostic Observation Schedule, or ADOS. The ADOS's first version wasn't created until 1989 and wasn't widely available to clinicians until 2001. While the ADOS isn't the final word in receiving an autism diagnosis, it does at least give clinicians a common point to begin the diagnostic process. Speaking of clinicians, another reason for the rate of autism to have increased so much is that there has been an increase in the number of psychologists, especially at the master's and doctorate level. The Bureau of Labor Statistics and the American Psychological Association have both reported huge surges of people working in psychology in the U.S. since about 2004, and that number is only projected to go up. More doctors and diagnosticians mean that while it is still extremely difficult to get an autism diagnosis, it's at least a little easier to find a clinician who can give a diagnosis now than it would have been prior to the early 2000s. More available doctors who are better educated in diagnosing autism means more people will be able to utilize these services. Hopefully, this one is reflective of an increased awareness regarding neurodiversity as well as mental health because we still have a need for so many more trained and talented psychologists. One big reason we didn't talk about is what happens to all those people born before that 1980 date when autism first appeared in the DSM. There are so many adults out there who have been autistic their whole lives, but simply never had access to diagnosis because of their age. Don't worry, we've got a whole separate video coming up about this population.
We also have a video coming up about how the criteria for autism has evolved since the 1980s, and that has undoubtedly impacted the rate of diagnoses as well. If you want to know more about our neurodiverse world, make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye!